Hello all and welcome to another episode of Videocast. No, just kidding. This is our annual questions and answers video. Woo! Woo! I am joined with my associates as per usual. Uh, Kayla slash Draco, Ryan slash Taitu. So first up, we have Big Grim. And he asks, will some of the characters have small missions where you'll get a rare card or item. So there'll be lots of side quests, of course, in this game since in uh, Shoot for the Stars, as it's a very big, massive RPG game with many, many characters. That includes both major characters and, and uh, non-playable characters. And you may obtain rare cards or items. Yes, very possible. And his second question is, will your rival have romantic feelings for you by the end of the adventure? We have gone on record saying that in Shoot for the Stars, um, you can build relationships with other characters in the game. Therefore, some of them do end romantically if you so choose. So it's basically up to you to pick which one you'd like to go out with. Next we have uh, Fission Essence. Uh, they ask, for, for each of you, are there any other games or properties that you look to as inspiration while you work? Be it, this is a, uh, this is a trading card game. The other trading card games I've grown up with, like Yu-Gi-Oh! and Cardfight Vanguard are massive inspirations and have contributed quite a lot to the project. I've borrowed a number of ideas from those two properties. Uh, so how about you guys? Big inspiration was obviously the Persona series, um, but that was sort of something we baked into the um, the game system itself. Uh, as far as less obvious inspirations, um, a lot of uh, card games I've played, um, namely specifically Y Cross, was a big inspiration for how the game plays now. As for me, I definitely draw some inspiration from. Pokemon, Digimon, Dragon Ball Z, Naruto, like basically like a lot of shonen stuff whenever I'm thinking of how I want to put together the artwork specifically. They also ask, do you ever have a problem and think, how did X company handle this issue? A lot of the times we've been sort of looking at other like smaller indie game devs and everything to see how they've sort of structured themselves, how they've succeeded, how they've failed, uh, trying to figure it out ourselves, plot our own course, and make sure that we do not fail ourselves. Next we have OIO. Have you added any new coding languages and or techniques to your works? So as far as Shoot for the Stars, actually, I mean, I learned how to script for Photoshop, if that counts for anything, but that just uses JavaScript, which I already knew. Um, but for Hide and Zeek, um, I had pretty much gotten a bit more into learning how shaders work. I already had a pretty good foundation for them, but I really got into them for Hide and Zeek but because it was required for our lighting system. And, uh, Yes, I feel like I understand them better. I've been using them even a little bit in TerraZone now. A follow-up to that is, which of your works currently in progress and completed is your favorite or enjoy the most and why? Uh, more or less, like, Hide and Seek was kind of like a trial game, so we knew going in with that game that it was going to be a short game. So, uh, obviously, Shoot for the Stars has a lot more to it, so just because it has more to it. Um, I would say that Shoot for the Stars currently is a favorite only for that reason. However, I did enjoy a lot, and I mean like, I greatly learned so much from animation when I was working with Hide for the Zeke specifically. Oh, wait a minute. Hide, hide for, for the, the Zeke. Zeke. <laughs> hide for the Zeke, I meant Hide and Zeke. Hide for the Zeke, coming out next year, May 2021. Yep. We skipped two and three, we're going straight to four. We're like Windows. Yeah. I mean, TerraZone has more stuff in it, and I have to I have to be biased because I've been working with TerraZone for years and years and years. Um, I guess like 
talking about both franchises, my favorite thing to do for both of them is the uh, the character designs. I have a lot of fun designing the characters, coming up with their personalities, their designs, little flares and things you can add to the design to make the character stand out from other characters. It's always just very interesting to me. I'd say probably I'm enjoying in Terrazone the most that I've been sort of able to dip into all different sorts of um, aspects of that game be it the writing, the programming, the HUD design, all of those things. Uh, so I've just been generally happy with the quality of everything that's been, um, that I've completed. And next we have Neoclassical Succubus. They ask, what's in the future of the game? In the future, the game will be released to the public. <laughs> On a more serious note, um, in the near future, there's going to be a playable demo, obviously free of charge, that everyone can dip their hands into a little Terra Zone, shoot for the stars, play a little Terra Zone Clash of Creatures within, get a little taste of what the game is like. And then we have mentioned before how we're going to be doing a uh, Kickstarter to help fund the project as well, because if it gets funded, then the game can get even better. Ah, uh, but he also asks, what's in the future for the story? Oh, well, that's that's going to be a very simple answer. You'll have to play <laughs> to find out. Bold of you to ask the creators for spoilers of their own story. All right, next we have ShaneM201. He asks, would you cosplay Destiny Dragon? No, I will not. He also asks, would you go to more conventions after coronavirus? Uh, no plans in the near future. <laughs> uh, moving on. We have Warm Hearts. Okay, the first question is, how long did it take to get started? So I would say probably about a month before we started because we had to wrap up Hide and Zeke. And then we took like a bit of a break and then we jumped on Shoot for the Stars because we were loosely talking about it. And I remember, I think I remember the first day we started working on it. That's when I was drawing up character designs. Uh, their other question is, how long did it take to create the characters? Not too long, actually. Um, all their designs came about pretty quickly. Um, it takes me, I wanna say like an hour to do like a, a rough, uh, design for the character and then I brush it by Ryan and Kayla here and then we all kind of share our thoughts and opinions on it and then uh, to get them in a place that I want them probably like throw on another hour or so after that and then you pretty much have a character all right um, next we have Skyscape how did you get started as a company and how did it progress from its beginning to what it is now uh, Mystic Mask Media started up, I want to say, in 2017. We uh, went under like a, an unofficial, unregistered name because uh, Ryan and I kind of started the whole thing. We're like, hey, let's make a game. So we were kind of messing around with like software where we were making some kind of game out of it. And then uh, we took a, we, we stopped doing that after a while and then we came back to it for Terra Zone. Uh, around 2018, we accumulated our. Um, a uh, small group of friends and officially started the business. So the business started like, I want to say like June, 2018, something like that. How did it progress from its beginning to what it is now? Art's been getting better. Programming's been getting better. Our ideas, we're starting to like kind of feel out what people want, what people might like. All that stuff is very tricky and takes a long time to uh, kind of understand. I could also add that for a company, it's very important to be able to communicate properly with everybody. Um, between the three of us, we're always meeting up and it's very important to be able to agree to disagree with different ideas that you might have. And yeah, making sure that communication is very, very important in a group is uh, pretty crucial. We have our disagreements, but we're very civil over it. So that, that it's 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 that that lets us keep pushing forward. So you just always remember that. Like if you have uh, you have if you have a party 
of people that are all working on something together and you're a part of that party um it's okay to have disagreements it's gonna happen do you have any tips for someone wanting to start a company whether it be by themselves or with a few friends don't overdo the amount of people that you put into your company at the start don't start with a lot of people that is i uh, we all highly recommend that because the more heads you throw in the project, the more butting of heads is going to occur. The general good rule of thumb, which honestly is something we're not even following at the moment, but at least as far as making a game company, it's recommended to have one person artist, one person programmer, and one person business. We're missing a business person right now. We've got two artists instead, but so far it's been it's been working out for us. Yeah, we've uh, been we, okay. Yeah, we do. We do have a friend that we can um, go to as far as business concerns. I would just say that anybody else that's included in the group would just be commission or employees at that point. Yeah, someone who's not like a big a big head in deciding what happens. There to contribute their talents, not their opinions. Yes. King of Red Lionels asks, when is Nerdigator getting printed and is there art in development? I bet nobody knows who the heck Nerdigator is, but we will answer this question anyway. <laughs> uh, kind of an inside joke, there is a card in the game called Ally Gator. In that picture, there's like a little nerd gator in the background, and Ally Gator's kind of sticking up for him. Yeah, don't worry, I got this. Don't worry about it. Like, he's one of those dudes. So we... Uh, K, uh, Red Lionels and I created this like little inside joke. It was like, oh, what if you know that? What if that nerd character became a character? Well, and then like uh, Lionels was like, yeah, he's called Nerdigator. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Let's make it a card one day. So yeah, we probably will be making that a card. Um, unfortunately, I can't say that there's art in development yet for him. But I'll, he, I'll draw it up right now. Nerdigator's in development right now in MS Paint. Yeah. There you go. All right. We have Tomb Cards. Uh, Tomb Cards asks, how long did your testing phase go for? So this iteration, which would have, which would become the final, the final iteration of TerraZone, started in January of 2019, I believe. Fun story, Taitu and I used to work together somewhere, and um, it was there where he was like, hey, so I have a proposal, and he brought up a Word doc, and it had like a list of changes to make to the game, because I said previously, I don't really like the way the game plays, it's kind of boring. So he proposed this idea, and I was like, you know what, let's give it a shot. After many, many months of testing and changing, short answer, it took about a year and a half to get through the testing phase until we were really satisfied with it where we played like 50 games and we were like all right it's good now and then with all the different conventions that we went to uh, i'd say easily combined with what we've done plus other people at least a hundred different battles we've done throughout that testing period it's been very well tested up to this point oh yeah because you, you just have to do that like you have to play your game over and over again if you're not having fun with it, fix it. All right, and they also ask, why is TerraZone the best card game? We think it's the best card game because it brings in a whole new unique spin on the card game, trading card game genre, in which card placement matters way more in this game in so many different ways than it does in all of the other card games out there. I think it also comes out even in the way we've handled effects in the game. Um, a lot of card games, it's usually the most boring generic effects that are the best in any card game. And we've tried to make everything niche so that there's more interesting ways to play the cards. Instead of just, oh, this card draws you a card so it's instantly good. Well, that's fun. We've, yeah, we've tried to expand, make, make people have to think a bit more about their plays. One of the things that I really like about 
this card game is how each affinity is truly very unique from one another. So, say like, uh, you know, you have, we released wind, earth, fire, water, and they, they all play very differently from each other. A lot of card games, I mean, they do do that, but it's usually just very generic kind of effects that just kind of get amplified. Whereas in this game, it's literally like very, very different effects, such as anything from moving cards around, bouncing cards, uh, creating tokens on the field, and then gaining like these effects off of these tokens. So we try to break the mold a little bit with how each affinity works as well. Yep. And then like lastly, I'll just say too, we try to give every single card some sort of a point. Because I've, I've noticed this in a lot of card games where they just print garbage that just sits there in a closet and doesn't do anything. Like even our vanillas, we give them, oh, they can go in the opposite direction. The affinity doesn't go in normally. Like that, just, just that as an example. Getting to the end here, folks. We have Angels of the Renaissance. They ask, what was your inspiration to make the card game? Back in the fifth grade, there was a little game called Kirby 64. And it had a little section in the game called Enemy Info Cards. You would collect them randomly as you finish a level, basically. And then it, they, there wasn't much on them. It was just a little picture of a dude and then like the like what number it is. And I just already right off right out of the gate, I just found that so interesting for some reason. Just like, oh, I'm putting things in order. This guy's number one. This guy's number two. So that eventually graduated into things like Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! that had a whole bunch of collectible monsters. They all had their own different powers and stuff. Like, all that stuff to me as a kid was super fascinating. I was just like, I really want to do that too. And so years and years have gone by, and now we have Terra Zone Clash of Creatures. They also ask, how many years have you put time into creating your game? Oh, boy. So, uh, technically... It was a game ever since 2002. It was just a really, really bad game. And I, by no exaggeration, it is ridiculous how many years have been put into this. On and off though, not consecutively, because I did have a break for a few years where I didn't do anything and this and that, you know. You know how life goes, guys. We are down to the last question, and it is from N. Rondo. What's the favorite character? What's your favorite character that you've made so far? We'll start. We'll start with you, Ryan. <laughs> well, I haven't created any of the creatures really, so I suppose that one I can't answer. But as far as the characters, uh, I mean, Son's pretty obvious, right? He's pretty, pretty goofy guy. Yeah, there's a reason um, he's the head of the devlogs. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'd, kind of a boring answer, but yeah, I'd probably say Sullen is my favorite. He's got a very unique personality, and it shows. Sullen, Sullen just goes in, he does not care. He will do what he wants to do. He even throws snowballs with his bare hands. Yeah, he's a boss. He'll just, pff, I don't care, I don't need gloves. All right, Kayla, favorite creature and favorite character. I suppose I'll start with my favorite creature. So my favorite creature would definitely be Dragon Girl because, you know, dragons, she's got like the best dragons ever. She rules all the dragon kingdom. She's got the awesome fangs and everything. And I mean, I like her so much, I guess I'll reveal it. I'm going to be uh, planning on cosplaying her in the near future. Oh man, oh man, there's an update in the Q&A video. There's an update in the Q&A video. Watch all of our videos. You never know. You never know. We might give you, sprinkle a little information in there. And then for character, yeah. I mean, I also like Son because, I mean, he's a really funny character. But if I had to choose a different character, Shikaku's a very close second favorite. I mean, I love his interactions with Son. It's really funny to me. He's like, yeah. He was always, like, so afraid of Son and what he's going to do to them and, like, how he's going to bully him and such. But I also like the air of how he's dressed. I think he's got a really cool hairstyle. And uh, just his overall personality, I think, is really fantastic. All right, uh, for me, my favorite creature is Vortex Maiden, because she is a boo. 
and for character, mm -hmm. they're all kind of warmed up to me at this point after drawing them so many times. But I will have to say Haley. Because she's as cute as a button, You'll, every time I look at her, I want to give her a big hug. Oh, and I think I remember a creature that Ryan does like. I do believe he really liked Flying Pig, yes? Oh, yes. Good old Flying Pig. Yeah, another one that'll show up in the relative near future. He's playing, that, That's a card planned for an early release. He's, he's a member of the Skies picture, at least as a cameo, so... People have seen him before. All right. And with that, that is all the questions. I have something very important to share. I did not forget. I am a man of my word. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> you actually did the Nerdigator. <laughs> yep. Uh, comment down below if you want this to be the official image of the Nerdigator card. We might just do it if you, there's a lot of people who want it to be the picture for the card. We might, we just might. Don't test us. We might do it. All right, guys. Thank you very much for submitting questions to us. It lets us know that you are interested in what we are doing. And it was a lot of fun making this video and answering these questions for you. We will probably do this yearly. I did this last year by myself and had a lot of fun with that. And this year we started work, I started working much more closely with Ryan and Kayla here, so it was only appropriate to include them as well. Any other uh, last minute things you either of you want to chime in with? Happy Meepy New Year! Yep, Happy New Year's everyone. The crazy 2020 is coming to an end. Who knows what 2021 will bring? Uh, a Kickstarter. It will bring a Kickstarter. It will bring a free demo and a Kickstarter at the very least. Have a happy new year. Hopefully 2021 treats you right. And look forward to all this great stuff coming up. Once again, thank you for submitting questions. We will gladly do this again next year. And stay tuned for more TerraZone content. Have a good one. See you later.